Damascus says al-Qaeda is involved in terrorist attacks in Syria with the support of the United States. State newspapers say the methods and choices of targets in terror attacks across the country are evidence of al-Qaeda's involvement. The newspapers say al-Qaeda-led terrorism is being funded by some Arab countries and is supported by the United States. Meanwhile, armed gang al-Nusra Front has claimed responsibility for the deadly bombing that rocked Damascus on Friday. Nearly a dozen people, including civilians, were killed in the attack. Thousands of people have been killed in the year-long unrest in Syria. The government blames the violence on foreign-backed armed gangs. Well, for more insight on the Syria situation, we're joined by Lizzie Fellin, journalist and broadcaster, joining us on the line from Managua. Welcome to the program. Uh, this isn't the first time al-Qaeda has been implicated in the terrorist attacks and unrest in Syria. Do you think that al-Qaeda is being used as a proxy to stir up the fragile situation in Syria? Well, there's absolutely no question about it. I mean, it's not just the Syrian government who has uh, laid the blame um, of, for much of these attacks uh, at al-Qaeda's door. Al-Qaeda themselves have claimed responsibility nu numerous times for uh, the terrorist attacks that have taken place in Syria, and they have uh, declared their full-fledged uh, certain members of the leadership have declared their support for the illegal um, insurrection uh, in Syria. And their links to the West are, again, no secret. Their links to the West go back a very long way. Hillary Clinton herself has stated on public record uh, that the United States is responsible for supporting al-Qaeda um, in, in, most famously in, in Afghanistan back in the 80s. Uh, and that relationship continued most of the most recent example being in Libya, of course, the Libyan Islamic Fighting Group is very is very well known to be a wing of Al Qaeda uh, in Libya. So th this is no secret. It's not it's not a, a claim made by the Syrian government, um, but it it just shows how obscene it is that today we had an attack in the very heart of Damascus in a densely populated area with a, with an RPG on the central bank. Um, and how, how obscene is it that there isn't an immediate condemnation by the United Nations and an in, immediate demand that those complicit in those attacks, uh, in that attack, i.e. those who have been supplying the RPGs and other weapons to these terrorists, be immediately stopped by any means necessary and that justice be served? And what do I mean by that? I mean that those who are complicit in these attacks are, of course, the NATO powers, uh, Israel, which is a de facto NATO member, and its allies in the Persian Gulf, uh, and that arrest warrants for their leadership, i.e. the leadership in the United States, Britain, etc., should be immediately issued, and their ability to continue making such bloodshed possible should be stopped by any means necessary. And by any means necessary, I mean that far from the wishy-washy calls for the Assad government to stop violence, in fact, the Assad government should be authorized by the United Nations to fulfill its obligations under international law to protect its people, civilians and military alike. And of course, this would have to be with the use of force because terrorists who are actively committing violence cannot be stopped by asking them to have a cup of coffee. These terrorists have refused time and time again and made clear that they will continue re to refuse to talk. So the only way for them to be, uh, to, for the Syrian people to be defended from them is with the use of force. Um, and so the situation really now is very critical. And so in the interest of protecting the Syrian people, there really can be no halfway me measures. And I'd just like to add also that uh, it's really also obscene that Major General Robert Mood from Norway has been appointed as the head of the UN observer mission to Syria. How is it that a high-ranking member of the military of one of NATO's founding members is expected to lead a peace mission? Uh, he, of course, clearly has a vested interest in carrying out the agenda of his country, which, as I mentioned, is a NATO member. And NATO's agenda has been clear from the outset, which is, of course, to force regime change by a no other means than violence. Well, Russia has called the uh, recent terrorist attacks barbaric uh, in nature and said the opponents of Damascus are in fact trying to undermine the ceasefire. NATO, on the other hand, says Damascus is not doing its part in upholding the ceasefire. How would you describe the conflicting international reaction to the situation in Syria in the wake of Anon's six-point peace plan? Well, I mean, it's absolutely clear that, you know, not only has the ceasefire been undermined, it has been outright violated uh, by the NATO powers who, who have made very clear that they are providing unlimited support to armed terrorists. 
And it's very, uh, you know, the, the media now, uh, they, they, like Sky News, for example, did a report today uh, openly admitting that the, uh, they call them the armed opposition groups inside Syria are uh, killing dozens of soldiers in just, in, just in certain areas every single day. Uh, but the, the Sky News very cleverly refers to terrorists as armed opposition groups, thereby, of course, they are serving, Sky News is serving the foreign policy agenda of Britain, the United States, etc. These are not armed, op uh, armed opposition groups, which implies legitimacy. They are terrorists. And if they were uh, carrying out similar acts in, in any Western country or any Western satellite country, they would be called what they are, and that is terrorists. Um, so the, the NATO powers claim that the Syrian government is uh, responsible for violating the ceasefire. You know, it really shouldn't be treated with any kind of seriousness whatsoever because NATO has a vested interest. interest. NATO is a criminal player in this, game, in, in this current conflict. Uh, Russia, Russia on, on the contrary, has been a power that has consistently caught, been, been very, very balanced. And actually, they should uh, really, under international law, uh, all, all um, members of the United Nations should, instead of, be, instead of calling for both sides to com uh, stop violence, they should be recognizing that this is a conflict whereby we have the Syrian state trying to protect the sovereignty of its country, and ha instead of stopping violence, it has the right to use violence to defend its territory. And on the other hand, we have a, a criminal actors, which are the NATO powers uh, and their proxies, the armed, in the armed insurgents. So Russia's in, uh, interest so far has been demonstrated just to be, be call, just to call for dialogue. On the other hand, senior members of the NATO powers, for example, William Haig, uh, Nicolas Sarkozy, uh, have outright called for violation of international law, i.e. increased support for those who have claimed responsibility for shedding civilian blood. Very well. Many thanks uh, to Lizzie Fallon, journalist and broadcaster, joining us from Managua.